and welcome to Chaken Analytics presentation of Trade Options Like an Expert, Secrets to Winning Options Trades from Two Pros. Presenting today is Mark Chaken, founder and CEO of Chaken Analytics, and Bob Lang, founder of Explosive Options. Chaken Analytics is not registered as a broker dealer or investment advisor, either with the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission or with any state securities regulatory authority. Chaken Analytics is for educational purposes only and is not a trade advisory service. Past results of any trading system or methodology do not guarantee future results. As a reminder, this webinar is being recorded and a copy will be sent to all registrants. Please submit your questions via the Zoom Q&A window, which you can access in the upper left-hand corner of your screen. And with that, here is Bob Lang. Thank you very much, Josh, and uh, welcome to everybody. Happy uh, Thursday to you all. It's great to be with you today. Um, and uh, I'm very excited to uh, once again present with, uh, with Mark Chaikin here, my good friend. Um, anyway, he's out, of, uh, he's out of town. He's in Europe right now and probably talk with you guys a little bit about that in a couple of minutes. But it's very exciting to, uh, to, to work with Mark. We've been friends for quite a long time. And, um, you know, every single, it seems like every, um, uh, every now and then <clears throat> when we do all these webinars together, there is something happening super important around the markets. I don't know. It's just maybe it's just our luck mark. It's just timing or something like that. But um, there's always seems to be some sort of um, something around the corner that um, maybe is probably going to move the markets in in one direction or the other. I think we had an oh, well, the last time we had a webinar was uh, was back in the spring, and it was after that massive uh, volatility push in February. So uh, so what do we have going on right now? We have um, a market that is very uncertain today. The markets got drilled. Um, volatility started to rise. Interest rates started to rise and people are starting to worry about that. Now, I just talked with Mark a couple of minutes before we got started with the webinar here. And I asked him point blank, I said, Mark, does this worry you at all? And, and actually, um, I'm going to I'm going to hide that answer to you because I'm going to let him go in there. But I did ask that que that question for him directly right away. Um, I'm going to tease you guys a little bit, um, but he, he'll have the right answer for you, um, uh, hopefully uh, going forward. So I'm excited to have Mark on here. He's been uh, a, a market veteran for for over 50 years, and uh, um, when I tell everybody about um, our um, friendship and our relationship here. And I, I, I speak with a great reverence for Mark and very excited to, uh, to have him as my, as my good friend. And, and we, we work very well together. Um, and uh, there's, nobody, there's nobody better than, than Mark Chaikin out there to work with. He's brought to, brought to everybody some of, the some of the best technical tools out there. And everybody uses them, the Chaikin Money Flow, the uh, other analytics and so forth. Um, uh, I use them every single day. Um, so without further ado, I'm going to bring Mark in here. Congratulations, um, to, uh, to you, Mark, on your trip out to, uh, out to, out to Europe. Enjoy yourself. Have a great vacation. But first, a little bit of work to wrap up here, which as we, uh, teach everybody to trade options like an expert. It's all yours, Mark. Bob, thank you. We're actually in Umbria in Italy. I read about the Italian monetary crisis and my wife and I said, well, we got to go over there and help things out. And so, uh, this is a trip we've been planning since May. We're spending a month in a ancient hill town in Umbria. And the amazing thing is Wi-Fi and internet and the world has changed. And we're going to talk about some of that on the webinar tonight. So how do you trade options like an expert? Well, we're going to get into that. And I should tell you that Bob has just written a great book. I was honored to be asked to write the foreword. Uh, everything you need to know about options. You can get it on Amazon. At the end of the webinar, we're going to make a special offer to everybody on the webinar tonight. So a little bit about me, 50 years on Wall Street, and for 45 years, I've been using technical analysis, but always in conjunction with fundamentals. Fundamentals drive the market. That's going to be the theme of this webinar. Uh, for five years, I headed up the options department at a regional brokerage firm called Tucker Anthony and RL Day. Bob's in Boston right now. Tucker Anthony was based in Boston. Tens of thousands of options traders, and I can tell you that 95% of them lost money. And in a couple of minutes, I'm going to tell you why and what we're doing to solve that problem. Along the way, I've been mentored by some of the smartest and most successful institutional investors, people 
people like George Soros and John Paulson and people at Drexel Burnham who did research in earnings surprise and earnings estimate revision and colleagues of mine at Tucker Anthony and Drexel and Shearson Hamill when I started out. The reason that's important is that the bulk of this webinar is going to be about something called the Chaikin power gauge rating. It's a multi-factor model. It's built to look at the factors that successful buy side portfolio managers from Peter Lynch to Warren Buffett to Bill Miller to the more contemporary people running hedge funds, Jeff Klarman. And it's the culmination of my life's work. I came out of retirement 10 years ago to start Shaken Analytics with my wife, Sandy. We forged a partnership with Bob Lang four year, five years ago now. And Bob is, I'd say, the options experts expert. And we're going to show you how what we do is complementary with what Bob does at Explosive Options. And in this afternoon's webinar, it's, it's now 10.15 uh, in Italy, and the time difference actually works. And I'm going to share an anecdote with you in a few minutes that I'll tell you something interesting about the Italian independence and, and how they reacted historically. And it, it's relevant to the market. I'm going to show you how to find bulls and bears with Chaikin power gauge rating and relative strength. That's our combination of fundamentals. That's the power gauge rating and technicals. I'm going to show you a, a unique way to use Chaikin money flow. We're actually going to get into it a lot earlier than we have in previous webinars. Shared this with institutional investors starting in 1982. That's how long Chaikin money flow has been in the marketplace. In fact, it would be great to know how many of you are familiar or using Chaikin Money Flow on your online brokerage platforms, on stockcharts.com, if you're a professional, on Bloomberg or Reuters. Type a big C in the, ch in the chat box if you're using Chaikin Money Flow, and Josh always does a great job of giving me a quick read on what he's seeing. Josh's screen is blanked. I'm seeing C's, Josh. So uh, sorry about uh, that, Mark. Yeah, the C's are coming in. I had it on mute. Yeah, they're rolling in. Well, check and money flow for 35 years has measured accumulation and distribution by institutional investors. That's why it's so powerful. But we have a special pattern. And there are so many examples of it today that it's very relevant. Rules-based exits and entries. If you're an options trader, you have to enter based on proven metrics got to play good defense because if you put your feet in cement and don't recognize the socks or changing character big trouble and then finally how to find probability based options plays strategies using options play which we've integrated into chicken analytics so i'd like to start out by looking at the market and i did this deck at six in the morning in italy which was one o'clock in the morning US time because the markets had been relatively strong yesterday and I sort of knew what was coming because interest rates had spiked. So do you see risks ahead for stocks? If you do type a big Y in the question box, please. Because today was a risk off day, as they say in Wall Street. Bond prices plummeted, yields went up to 3.23% on the 10 year, but some really good things happened today. So what, how are you viewing the stock market between now and year end? Bullish, bearish? A lot of whys rolling in for seeing risks ahead. Okay, so that leads us into an analysis of where the market is from our perspective. 2017 was easy. We were in uptrend on autopilot never had a correction of 3%. The hardest thing was staying fully invested because the gurus were telling you to watch out. And then in January of 18, January 26th, the market peaked, January 29th, I did a webinar with Jim Cramer, who is a very good friend of Bob Lang. Bob introduced, reintroduced me to Jim, who had been a client of ours in the 90s. And Something really interesting happened because interest rates went up to 3%. We went into a roller coaster of a correction. You see it on this one year chart of the SPY. This is the large cap index. This is the market. 
SPY, most actively traded instrument in the US markets. So what happened in January of 29, of, of uh, January 29th of 18, because that's why a lot of people are nervous today. Interest rates spiked above 3%. We hadn't had a correction of 3% for over a year. And we started trading down off what's known as a French curve or waterfall rally on the upside, parabolic. Problem with parabolic moves is you know they're gonna end, but you never know when. And in this case, what could have been a five or 6% pullback turned into a full-blown correction, 13% decline in the S&P 500. When you get that, it takes time to form a bottom. And so you form this W-shaped bottom. Prior to that, through 16 and 17 V-shaped bottoms, declines of less than 5% end in the shape of the letter V. They just keep going and within a month, they're back up to new highs. This took time. Hey, Mark, can I, can I jump, jump in here for a second? You bet. So I'm, I'm looking at the chart here. And, and, and again, I'm, I'm, <clears throat> let, me, let me tell everybody, one of the reasons why I love shaking analytics is because I'm a very simple-minded person. My son who goes to Berkeley is very complex, has a very complex mind. I'm just the opposite. I need I need simple. I need basic, especially when trading options, because I need to I need to move fast. So when I look at this mark, I look at the shake and money flow, and around that time, around February, March, Jan or when when the markets were had all that turmoil and all that volatility going on, I don't see a lot of um, institutional selling in the shake and money flow, which tells me that even though there was a lot of volatility here, the 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 money the money isn't being isn't flowing out as quickly or as easily as most people would have expected would have assumed. In fact, I even, you know, there's probably some times that even when the money flow is negative, slightly negative right here, this is where the institutions are probably um, looking at, looking for places that not necessarily getting in there like in March, April or May, but probably waiting for those, um, for that uh, chicken money flow to go green. Is that correct? It is. And what's interesting here is there's a pattern in chicken money flow. We call it stealth accumulation. We look back over 21 days, see how a stock closes in its range, average it all out. The bottom line is this is an oscillator that's supposed to fluctuate around the zero line. So it's typical when it goes red on a pullback. What's not typical and what's really predictive is what happened here in June. You get a full-blown pullback from 2800, which was resistance to 2690. And look at shake and money flow, never went negative. What does that tell us? It tells us the institutions were buying weakness. They weren't contributing to the weakness. They were taking advantage of it. And then finally, after breaking above 2,800, serious resistance, we pull back, we tested it twice, and we've moved on to major new highs. Now, small caps had preceded the market, as had the triple Qs, the NASDAQ 100. That's been totally reversed. Small caps are making new lows here for the last three months. Large cap stocks have been strong. And we think they're gonna continue strong into year end. Why? Because the economy is strong. We'll look at that in a minute. So our takeaway from this chart is shake in money flow is bullish. The market's oversold. That was before today's weakness which isn't reflected on this chart. We held 2,900, which round numbers are always significant. 2,873 is the breakout level where we went above the January peak. So right now the bull is confirmed. And I have an interesting way I look at bull and bear. Easiest way to define an uptrend series of higher highs and higher lows. And that's what's been happening since March. S&P is outperforming the small caps. There are more stocks with bullish power gauge ratings and bearish. Everything's bullish. Mark, I Mark, Mark, yeah. would also say that, uh, you know, if people just step back a little bit and, and realize how strong the markets were in July and August. I mean, almost 8% mark in those two months alone. And September would have been a really, it would have been up, up over 1% if it wasn't for the last couple of days of the month. And it, it, it ended up slightly higher in September, but still that third quarter mark was, I think I read was the best quarter that the markets had had. I mean, 
S and P and the Dow in probably in, in, in years, right. And probably, I think over five years, 13 was the last time we had a quarter that strong. So shouldn't be a surprise that, you know, the, the markets are going to step back. are going to have some of these days like today, but as you said, it's, you saw some good things happening and not necessarily um, a reason to throw the baby out with the bathwater. Not at all. And what's interesting is people who are nervous here are looking back to January and they saw interest rates spike above 3%. Yesterday, they went to 323 on the 10-year treasury, two-year treasuries yielding 220. Finally, you can get yield on risk-free investments. And we now have to think, okay, is this going to be a replay of January? Well, no, it's not. <clears throat> the reason is in January, some exotic exchange trade, a note blew up, key to volatility, accelerated the decline. That's what required the W bottom. So if you're bullish, <clears throat> you're looking for what to buy. Now, if you're bearish and you think there's a replay of February coming, there's an interesting put spread, and we love vertical put spreads. We're going to show you a very simple but compelling explanation of why that works in about five minutes. But we've incorporated a module from a company called Options Play and Shake and Analytics. Bob Lang, Explosive Options, does a great job of monitoring unusual activity using his own brand of technical analysis and options analysis. But Bob is only human. He can only follow a certain number of stocks, whether it's 10, 20, 30, 40 stocks. Using options play, we can help you zero in on the best high probability strategies for any stock, whether you're bullish or bearish. So what are we looking at here in the S&P? Let's say you think, and this is when the market was down 33%, ended up down almost 1%. 0.33, you think there's going to be a 6% pullback. One thing, you got to give yourself time. Vertical put spread enables you to do that. So this idea, again, not a recommendation, as Josh said, S&P was 291.75. You buy the 291 put that expires December 21st. And to reduce the cost of that put, which would be $606, you sell a December 21st, 276 put against it. Look what happens. You reduce the cost almost in half. You increase your profit potential to double. And you get that big, beautiful green circle with the check mark telling you this is a high probability trade. This is why we like vertical put and call spreads. You're reducing your cost of entry increasing your returns. And this is the way you can protect a portfolio. Let's say you have a 401k plan with $300,000 in you. Buy 10 of these spreads, $3,340. You're protecting yourself against a 6% decline in the market. You stay long those great stocks that we're going to talk about, Apple, CRM, Adobe. Or if you're a speculator and you think there is a 6% decline coming down to the 2760 area. And by the way, breaking 2800 would not be good technically for the market. It's where we bottomed out multiple times this summer. You can make over 300% on your money. This is not a bad trade. 15% difference, $300, you can make almost 1200. And we're going to have other examples of this with individual stocks. Now, what caused all this? Well, the treasury market collapsed. Why? Because there were great unemployment numbers and jobs numbers on Friday. And it took a little time to spill over into equities. But you have interest rates on the 10-year treasury at record seven-year highs, 3.23%. Got to go back to 2011. More importantly, the 30-year bond is at four-year highs. Why is that important? Because everybody's been agonizing over the yield curve. The difference between short and long-term rates flattens out. People think it's bearish. It's really not. Just means the economy is strong. This is what triggered it. So the question you have to ask yourself as an investor is, are we going to replay January, February, March? 
and have a 13, 15% decline? I don't think so. Why? Because the economy is strong. So here's been our scenario for 2018 since day one, January 1st. Higher interest rates and rising earnings. The fallacy is on TV, Jeff Gunlock, the biggest bond manager in America, Bill Gross from PIMCO, they're all telling you that higher interest rates are bearish. Ray Dalio from Bridgewater, a $60 billion hedge fund. That's just not the case. When interest rates go up because the economy is strong, that's bullish. It's reflecting increasing loan demand, strong economy, tightening wages. Now, what the market doesn't like is what happened yesterday, a very fast, rapid spike in interest rates. That happened in January, was followed by the blow up of this unusual instrument. Don't think it's gonna happen this time. And we're now in, in October, that period when the market usually bottoms out. Now here's the final piece of the puzzle. In a, in a midterm election year, the fourth quarter, is the best time to buy stocks and hold them for nine months. So the question we're gonna answer on tonight's webinar is, what stocks should you buy for a booming economy? We're in a booming economy. Jerome Powell, the head of the Fed said, hey, may, we may be get 4% GDP growth in the fourth quarter. We think it's gonna be 4.2 in the third quarter, not yet reported. Our earnings season starts October 12th when the big banks report. So the Fed's telling you that there's almost a perfect storm, reasonable inflation, strong economy, rising interest rates. This is all very bullish. So we're gonna focus on what to buy. Now, the biggest problem we face as investors is information overload. And Bob, I know you wanna weigh in here. Yeah, Mark, Mark I was just gonna um, say that um, <clears throat> with rates, uh, long rates at 3%, three and a quarter, whatever, you know, um, yeah, do you do you do you recall what the uh, what rates were back right before the uh, the Great Recession occurred back in two thousand six two thousand seven? Well, J P Morgan has said that rising interest rates until you get to five percent don't impede the economy. Yeah, we were over like six. I think five and a half. Yeah, yeah. You know five, I mean? five and a half. You get over five percent, there's a problem. Right. The Fed's, the Fed's doing something to pull in the reins. So. We're in great shape here. Absolutely. You have to weather these day-to-day -day volatilities. And the fact that the market held at 2,900, and we may, we may break it and test 2,873, is very bullish. But we've talked about a lot of different variables here, the stock market, interest rates, the economy. It's our biggest problem as traders and investors, information overload just too much information. That's why Bob Lang has provided such a valuable service with explosive options because he filters the options trades. He watches unusual activity and flags it, puts together an option strategy, goes into that trade quickly, lets everybody know it. You need to conquer information overload. Our solution is Chaken Analytics. And as you'll see, we solved the biggest problem that options traders at Tucker Anthony had when I ran the options department. So we've integrated options play into check and analytics. So you can find high probability options trades on any stock, whether you're bullish or bearish, plain English explanations, modify it if you're sophisticated, just go with their best recommendation. If you're a beginner, work up the curve, so not only do we provide the fundamental and technical tools, but we recognize how important it is for you not to have to analyze the Greeks, the volatility, the Delta and so forth. Too much information. I couldn't do it and I ran an options department. So what underlies our philosophy at Chaken Analytics? We've been in business for nine years. Fundamentals drive the market but emotions drive the market to extremes. So for me, for 50 years on Wall Street, the path to profits has always been the combination of fundamentals and technicals. The problem is time. None of us have the time to analyze the fundamentals. Even if we had the tools, if, even if we had the MBA, the Wall Street background, 
how many f stocks can you possibly follow? We follow with our model 5,000 stocks updated nightly. Does the model work all the time? No, it works over time. Meaning that if you follow a discipline of avoiding bearish rated stocks, focusing on bullish rated stocks with strong technicals, you're putting the odds in your favor. So because of this unique combination of fundamentals and technicals, we've attracted a, a big following among some of the smartest and most successful traders and investors. John Najarian, Jim Cramer, Bob Lang at Explosive Options, who really, re, as I said, reinvigorated my relationship with Jim. Bob and Jim created FANG. I don't know how many of you know that. What is it, five years ago? We celebrated the fifth anniversary of uh, Bob. February of uh, 2013, Mark. Yep. And FANG has been an interesting concept. Active portfolio managers have had a hard time outperforming the market because five stocks in the S&P, now 10, accounted for more than 100% of the performance. It's frustrating if you're not in those stocks. So we've been blessed with a lot of great endorsements, partnerships, friendships that have formed along the way. But more importantly, for your options trading, the Chaikin Power Gauge, our go-to fundamental indicator, improves your options trading. And it does that by giving you a directional edge. That's what the 95% of the traders at Tucker Anthony, we had 20 branches, 250 brokers, 95% of the people lost money. They bought short dated options out of the money based on emotions. They didn't understand that you need a directional edge. Now, Bob Lang gives you a directional edge by analyzing options order flow. We give you a directional edge by synthesizing the fundamentals, giving you the key technical indicators, just two of them, combining this all into a quantitative model and then providing discipline buy and sell signals for better entries and exits. I'm going to bring back an oldie but a goodie. It's one of my favorite songs out of New Orleans by Dr. John. It must have been the right place, but it must have been the wrong time. That's the death knell for options traders. No matter how good your ideas are, if your entries are bad, you pick your strike prices, your expirations incorrectly, you're going to lose money. So we help solve that problem. Now, all of this can be synthesized into this pyramid. Successful trading demands a disciplined methodology. So at the top of the pyramid, the power gauge rating, that's our fundamental go-to indicator, proven indicator. Industry group strength, really important. We'll see industry group patterns unfold over and over again in the course of this webinar. The strong gets stronger and the weak get weaker. In the case of industry groups, macro factors. So how many of you know the, what macro factors really mean in the stock market? If you do, type a big M in the question box. So here's an example of a macro factor. Home builders, very strong into January, and then the whole game was over. And all of the home builders were affected. For a while, Toll Brothers did well. Then it was D.R. Horton. Then it was Pulte. Bottom line is, if an industry group goes south, they're all going south. The old expression when I started in Wall Street, if they raid the whorehouse, they're going to take the good with the bad. Industry group strength, very important. At the bottom of the pyramid, just two technical indicators, check in money flow and check in relative strength. Relative strength is really interesting. I'm going to relate that to something that happened here in Umbria 600 years ago. And then right in the middle, done for you options ideas from options play. So at its heart, the power gauge rating is a very simple display that looks like the gas gauge on your car. And it makes the complex simple. Fundamental analysis entails a lot of data. On the right is the typical data set that fundamental analysts on Wall Street and on the big mutual fund portfolio desk look at. I couldn't make heads or tails of that. Bob Lang ran a pension fund for Sunkist, and I would guess that he had to deal with it, but didn't, didn't like, like it. it. No, it wasn't a lot of fun, Mark. 
<laughs> right. That's just, right. Uh, that, that was before spreadsheets or maybe the start of spreadsheets. We synthesize it all down to that gauge on the right. This is LAM research from a year ago. I can't give it up because LAM went from 127, almost doubled, but the power gauge bullish all the way. So what is the power gauge? Well, it's the synthesis of 30 years of working with successful institutional investors. We look at value, growth, technical, and sentiment factors. Four primary factors, five sub-factors. Now, why do we do that? Some models on Wall Street are religious, like Warren Buffett. He used to claim he was a value investor, didn't buy tech stocks, now he's long Apple. So either it's a consumer stock in his mind, but you and I probably think of it as a tech stock. Jim Cramer keeps saying it's a consumer stock. But the reason that we're looking at different factors is that successful investors have different styles and different time horizons. So Warren Buffett, longer time horizon, looks at value metrics. They're 35% of the model. Free cash flow to market cap because you can doctor up earnings, but cash is cash. And price to sales. You pay too much for a dollar of revenue and you're on a high wire without a safety net. Think Stitch fix, is that stick, stick fitch that went, went up yesterday? They got pounded yesterday, SFIX, yeah. Yeah, uh, you know, a great concept, send women clothes in a box and then let them return it. Uh, if you've ever been in the retail business, that's to me not a great prescription for success, but that's a different story. Growth factors, that's what Jim Cramer looks at. Technicals are only 15% of the model and sentiment is our secret sauce. What are the smartest people on Wall Street doing and saying? Short interest, insider activity, industry group relative strength. And then I boxed earnings surprise and earnings estimate revisions. I said earlier that I was mentored by some very smart people. When I was at Drexel Burnham in the mid nineties, they were known for an aggressive junk bond investment banking, Mike Milken sort of fiefdom almost took over the world until they overstepped. But under the surface, they had a great quantitative department. George Douglas, he's in Santa Monica today, near where Bob lives, running $6 billion of quant money. Why is George important? He did the original research in earnings surprise and earnings estimate revision. So what is earnings surprise? Analyst reports, a company reports better than expected earnings. That's a positive earnings surprise. What does that do? It causes analysts to raise their estimates. This has been going on for the 50 years that I've been on Wall Street. Company reports better than expected earnings. The analysts at Goldman Sachs or Morgan Stanley raises his estimates. The salesmen on the desk want to do business. So they do what's known as pounding the table. They call their best clients and say, you got to buy Micron, got to buy Marathon Petroleum or Adobe. Our, our analyst loves it. And it's a virtuous cycle. And the, the good news is earnings surprise persists for quarter after quarter after quarter. It's like trying to turn around the, the Queen Mary. You can't do it quickly. So the power gauge rating works because it's based on how Wall Street works. This is not a model built by newly minted PhDs from MIT throwing digital spaghetti on the wall. That's what got us in trouble in 2008 or in 1998 when two Nobel Prize winners almost tanked the market because they built a bond model that didn't reflect how Wall Street worked reflected some theoretical valuations. It's long-term capital, right? right Mark? Yep. Yeah. And so you got to watch out for models that are theoretical. This is based on my 50 years of experience on Wall Street. And we froze the model in 2010, never changed the factors or the weights. And here's the performance of the model that Jim Cramer called the best, used it at my old hedge fund. A year ago, October 28th, Bob Lang and I both spoke at Jim's conference in New York, live conference. People paid $300 to be there. And he went through the same factors that we went through just now. And the performance speaks for itself. Life to date, which incorporates 
simulated results through 2010, and they're always going to look good. We know that. But real-time results for over eight years. Average very bullish stock in the Russell 3000 up 20%. The average very bearish stock over that 18-year period up only 1%. And that's after a nine-year bull market. If we did this seven years ago, the average bearish stock would have been down 5%. And in 2015, that's exactly what happened. What happened in 15? Energy stocks went into their own bear market. Small caps were in a bear market. They were down more than 20%. So range resources, Kinder Morgan, Pioneer, the rails, small caps in general, took it on the chin. And the power gauge rating zeroed in on that because the fundamental factors work over and over and over again. And then one final proof point, we'll get to some very specific examples. Three NASDAQ chicken indices started in 2014, four and a half year real-time track record. Large cap, small cap, dividend achiever, all outperforming their benchmarks. New York Life, our partners in the ETF business, licensed them February of 17. There are two ETFs, CLRG and CSML, large and small. This is not a recommendation to buy them. It's validation that the power gauge rating works for options traders, swing traders, people managing their 401k plan, and also buy and hold investors because these indices rebalance once a year. And we were blessed, and Bob knows how emotional we were about this because he takes his community, his traders, down to the New York Stock Exchange once a year in April and then has a big party at Jim Cramer's Mexican restaurant in Brooklyn. We rang the opening bell on NASDAQ on April 30th. Jake and Power gauge rating, our ETFs were up on the scrolling sign, 42nd Street, the NASDAQ headquarters. A big deal. Big time for Chaikin Analytics and for the 26 people in Philadelphia who support our members. So let's get into how you make money. Thank you for listening to the sort of build up. I think it's important because my goal is for you to come away from this webinar believing that there's a discipline methodology that you can use along with Bob Lang's options flow analysis with whatever research you're doing, whether it's with candlestick patterns, crossing moving averages, you need the fundamentals. So we have a pattern we call classic shake and bulls. The power gauge rating is bullish. The stock is outperforming the market and check and money flow is strong, telling you that the institutions are accumulating the stock. So our poster child for this is now Microsoft. Up until a month ago, it was Centene, Medicaid provider, up almost 100% in the last two years. But look at Microsoft, stayed old Microsoft. And what we do differently at Chaikin is we read the chart from the bottom up. Most people look at a chart, they look at the price action. Higher highs, higher lows, it's in an uptrend, that's great. Why do we look at the chart from the bottom up? Because that's your directional edge. It's the power gauge rating. If the fundamental potential for a stock is bullish, you want to be looking for long trades. And then we want the market to agree with the model. Because when the market agrees with the model, it's telling you that the fundamental gauge is being validated. When the market disagrees with the model, the market always wins. It's Marty Zweig's old mantra, listen to the market. Mr. Market always wins. And I'm going to bring in this Tuscan, uh, this Umbrian anecdote, because I think it actually ties in. 600 years ago, Pope Alexander decided to tax salt. And one royal family in Umbria said, not so fast. And they started making their bread without salt. It started what's known as the Great Salt War. And guess who won? Mr. Market won, the Pope, because he had all the resources. So when he defeated this family in Umbria, far from Rome, two hours, three hours, four hours from Rome, what did he do? He burned down their castle and built a warehouse where he stored rusty crosses and wagons 
just to rub it in because Mr. Market always wins. You want stocks that are outperforming the market. And then you want shaken money flow to be strong, telling you that the institutions are accumulating the stock. So everything you need to know about a stock is on this chart. Now, the fundamentals bullish, that's the red, green, yellow ribbon at the bottom. Outperforming the market, relative strength is green, not red. Big mounds of green tell you the institutions are accumulating the stocks. And then one of our six pairs of buy and sell signals are relative strength buy triggered four times. I'm going to spend a tiny bit of time here because we're going to show many of these in the webinar. What is a relative strength buy? It comes in a stock that's outperforming the market, best if the fundamentals are green, that dips under its 21-day average and then moves back above it. So what are you doing? You're buying a stock that's demonstrated strong performance on a 26-week basis, had a minor pullback, some of them come with money flow green, that's stealth accumulation, then moves back above the 21-day average, that's a 21-day exponential. There's your entry point. These signals work 70% of the time, and the beauty for options traders is they last for four to eight weeks because they reflect the underlying bullishness of the stock, the outperformance. So they're perfect for options traders, for swing traders, and you see four good examples here on the chart. And then we color code earnings. This keys into earnings surprise. Green, if they outperform, notice how they come in bunches. And then up at the top, we tell you the earnings date, October 25th, Thursday. Why do we have a green explanation point? Because analysts are raising their estimates. So there's a lot of information on this chart, really the only chart you have to look at. You get the option strategies just by clicking right here. So that's our classic bull, and it's nice to know that there's a pattern that works for long trades, but how do you find them? So we built a screener that's unique in that it enables you to create a custom universe or access a custom universe, and then put in the factors in the power gauge. Most people have technical indicators in there. We think these factors are so strong, we want you to be able to identify them. So what have I done here? This was for a webinar I gave two and a half months ago when I thought large cap stocks were going to start to outperform. Remember I said earlier in the webinar, small cap stocks led the market until about two months ago, and then they've given up the ghost. So I started with a universe we call large cap growth, 529 names, wanted the power gauge to be bullish. That's our fundamental go-to indicator. And because free cash flow indicates the health of a company. It's one of the factors in the model. We wanted free cash flow to be bullish. Then the two technicals, strong money flow, strong relative strength to the market, reduce 529 names down to 12. Citrix, First Data, Expedia, Express Scripts, Humana, all did well. Wealthcare just blew out, so did Centene. Advanced auto parts caught my eye back on 717. Why? Because the power gauge had given a special sell signal along with check and money flow at 170. Stock dropped, as you'll see, all the way to 7887. So let's look at what advanced auto parts look like from 717 over the next two weeks. So 717, the stock was here, past the screen and then gave us what we call an oversold buy on July 31st. The stock was 141. Now what's an oversold buy? It's a new eight day low in a stock with a bullish power gauge rating. I owe this signal to Larry Williams, one of the most brilliant technicians I've ever met. And it's a great trading signal, last five to 10 days, two out of three tend to work. So it's a great, entry point for a swing trade or an options trade. So I was monitoring AAP because I monitored all 12 of the stocks on that list, gave the buy signal, recommended it to our members, and the stock ran to 170. And now look what's happened. This is a preview of something to come. The stock has made a new high up at 170, triple top, 
Look at shake and money flow, red, not green. We call that a bearish money flow sell alert. We're gonna show you in depth how it actually happened on advanced auto parts a year and a half ago at 170, exact same level. There are a lot of stocks, including Microsoft, that look like that right now. Well, Microsoft is not showing that. It's another stock that we're going to look at. Bearish money flow sell alert. Powerful pattern, stealth distribution. Who's selling the stock up here? Why isn't money flow green with the stock overbought? It's a great way to get out of a stock near its high, believing that you haven't left a lot of money on the table. Classic bear, the other pattern. Power gauge bearish. That means the fundamentals are weak underperforming the market, taking money flow is red, not green. And here we have a stock that very sadly has gone from 130 to 28 in a bull market, biotech and drug stock to sorrow. Read the chart from the bottom up, power gauge bearish, relative strength weak, institution selling, sell signals along the way. And now that the stock has rallied from 28 to 30, do we want to buy it? No. Why? Because money flow is still red. Nobody's accumulating the stock. They're selling strength. You don't want a bottom fish. The rumors of takeover bids, but this is typical of the stock you need to avoid to protect capital. Now, I told you we'd sort of zero in in a very simple way on our favorite option strategy. And Bob, uh, you may want to weigh in on this. Typical way that someone trades options is Bob. What? Well, they, <clears throat> well, they, they the, the, simplistically, if you believe a stock is going to go higher, you will buy calls. If you believe a stock is going to go down, you'll just buy puts. Um, there's other different, other, other esoteric type ways of going about doing it, creating synthetics, or and then um, using using puts for bullish plays and so forth, but those are, those require selling. But, but for the basics, uh, basics of purposes of what you're talking about, just buy, if you think the stock's going up, just buy a call. And here's the biggest problem with that. And Bob knows this better than anybody. Decay. <laughs> Option is worthless on expiration date, unless it's in the money. And the time decay accelerates in the last 15 days. So if you're buying short dated options out of the money or even at the money, you need a lot of juice. You need that directional edge. When an option expires, it's only worth what its intrinsic value is, which is the difference between the strike price and the current price of the stock. So how do you solve the problem of time decay? Well, for us, it's vertical spreads, either bull or bear. And we're going to show you three or four examples of that we did with the SPY. In a vertical spread, you say, I have a point of view in the stock. I think it's going up. I don't want to buy a call outright because we're going to see that's expensive. So I'm going to buy a call that's slightly at or out of the money. And then I'm going to sell a call that's all premium against it that's gonna reduce my cost. If you do that day in and day out, time in and time out, you're putting the odds in your favor. It's called a vertical put or call spread. It has a very good risk reward profile. And we're gonna show you three examples of it going forward here. So three more patterns and a lot of examples here and a special offer at the end. Dynamic duo, personality changes and stealth accumulation and distribution we've already given you an advanced look at that with, with advanced auto parts. So what is the dynamic duo? It's the combination of relative strength and the shake and power gauge rating, fundamentals and technicals. It finds big winners and also big losers like Tesoro. One exception, one caveat, relative strength can stand alone as a bullish or bearish indicator. You've all traded what's known as momentum stocks cloud computing stocks, 3D printing stocks, stocks with great price action, but the fundamentals don't support it. And that can go on for a long time. The problem is, and that's why the price to sales ratio is so important to people like Warren Buffett. If you pay too much for dollar revenue, which you are in stocks like Tesla, 
other high flying stocks, when something goes wrong, and Lord knows a million things have gone wrong for Elon Musk lately, you're on a high wire without a safety net. And it's very, very painful, painful psychologically and financially. Hey, Mark, I just wanted to, um, to highlight, I think, <clears throat> you know, there's a lot of people out there who, you know, struggle with trying to make money on stocks on the downside. I, I get it. You know what? We're, we've been in a long, bull, long run bull market. Down days don't last too long or they're very swift. They're, they're painful. They're powerful and they're, and they're, but they're short. Right. But when I, I noticed uh, the other day, Mark, one of your favorite, uh, mm -hmm. favorite names that you, you made money on years ago, we talked about a couple of times on a webinar, um, actually flashed a uh, power gauge sell signal in June. Um, now, now, stocks started to improve in, in around June and July, and we talked about July and August being strong months. But there's one in particular here, Mark, that caught my stock is down like, 35 40 percent and that's win yeah win resorts and we've got it in the deck so this stock i mean you know i mean you the the, the great thing is that i mean you, you the, the, this stock just stayed on a power gauge um sell signal for months a few years back i mean you 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 referenced that a couple of times and it's one of the best uh one of the best trending moves you know, we've seen, you know, trends can go up and down, but that's one of the best. But this one, this one went on a power gauge for sell signal mark at, at 192. It, it closed today at one in the 120s. And you oh. could have ridden that thing for the past one, two, three, four, four and a half months. I mean, it wasn't, it wasn't difficult if you'd been paying attention to the analytics. That's, that was just my, um, my, <laughs> my, my contribution there. Yeah, and we've had a target of 110 for a long time on that stock. So we'll show that in a minute here. The other pattern we love is personality changes. <clears throat> I think it's the key to making money in the market and keeping it. The reason is too often we put our feet in cement and we're on the wrong side of that door when Jack Nichols is coming through with the ax because we're stubborn. Human beings are stubborn. We give up our prejudices very slowly. And the key to making money is to spot when the basic character of a stock has changed. So what is a personality change? Well, a bullish personality change happens when a stock like Macy's back in late November goes from underperforming the market to outperforming the market. Everybody had written off bricks and mortar retails, the curse of Amazon, the Death Star. And Macy started doing things right. So based on a positive earnings surprise, the stock spiked up, leading the retail group higher, and it went from red to green, underperforming to outperforming. Do we want to buy that spike? No. We want to wait for a pullback and take advantage of the first buy signal. In this case, our oversold buy, new eight-day low. That's what we call our low-risk entry point. We don't want to chase strength in almost any market. And then there have been three other signals, and they've all worked reasonably well. Again, two out of three work. So here's an example of a bullish personality change. Macy's went from 25 all the way to 41. Here's a bearish personality change. And this, I know, is painful for a lot of people. Micron Technologies, chip manufacturer, had a huge run all the way up to 65. Power gauge was bullish, outperforming the market, very volatile stock. And then something changed, and it changed as recently as July. Now, are you always going to catch the tops in a stock that double top at 65? You know, in retrospect, looks interesting. You don't have to do that. When you see that personality change, when the stock has dropped below its long-term trend line and is underperforming the market with institutions selling, what do you do? Well, the power gauge is neutral, so you look for the first sell signal after the power uh, personality change. Where did that come? Came at 51 in late August on the way to 40. Those are the moves you want to sidestep. If you overstayed your welcome in Micron, 
admit defeat, move on, find bullish rated stocks. If you're looking for short opportunities, and we love those vertical put spreads, it's a fabulous signal, very reliable. The stock's underperforming the market with institutions selling. Here's another example, AMAT, Applied Materials. Early today, it was down 2.6%. It was down over 3% at the close. Personality change came a lot sooner. Back here in April with big institutional selling. And what do you want to do? You want to wait for that first sell signal. Took a month. Be disciplined. Don't rush it. But look at that wonderful relative strength sell signal with the stock at $50, drops down to 44, rallies up ahead of earnings. You get another relative strength sell signal, again, cross below the 21-day exponential. Disappointing response to earnings. The stock drops all the way to 38. If you can avoid those moves, take AMAT and Micron Mark. off your bullish radar screen, you're going to improve your results. Mark, you know what? what we're, where I notice a lot of people fail with options, because obviously, as you touched upon a few moments ago about time decay being the enemy of the buyer, option buyer, um, I think where people fail uh, is they interpret these things, uh, these signals, um, from a bias, meaning what they want to see instead of what's actually happening. And I will tell you that um, over the over the years that I've used Chicken Analytics, um, the great thing about it is I'm able to um, make quick decisions and not have to think so much about what needs to be done or what's happening. When you, the, these signals just come out there, they just pop out. They're right in, right in front of you. It, there's 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 no there's no discussion with myself, I guess, so to speak. And there's no ambiguity. It's, no, it's no you, know, you either believe in it or you don't. And if you right. believe in it, it's going to be your friend for a long time. Absolutely. Yeah, so we call that the bullish personality change. And what Bob's describing is not putting your feet in cement. So final pattern, secret sell signal, 95% of traders never see it. You can spot it on stockcharts.com or... Think or swim, it's all in the, in the package. Money flow sell alert. What happened to advanced auto parts back in the spring of 2017? Well, it made a new high. Guess where? At 170, just where it peaked recently. And instead of money flow going green, it stayed red. What did that tell you? Smart money was selling the stock. It's a clear cut sign that they're getting out under cover of strength. We call it a money flow sell alert. If you're long, get out. I probably wouldn't go short there, but look what happens. You get that same progression. Bearish personality change, power gauge going bearish, dynamic duo weak, institution selling. You get relative strength sell signals at 150 then again at 112, then again at 95. It's never too late to sell a stock that's giving you a disciplined sell signal because the low was 78.87. Now it turned around, power gauge turned bullish and it went all the way back to 170. And now it's giving another money flow sell alert. Patterns repeat over and over and over again on Wall Street. So here's a more recent example. Mohawk Industries and the carpet business. We talked earlier about how home builders were very weak as a group. And look what happened. Mohawk made a new high up around 270. Money flow stayed red, not green. You got a relative strength sell signal. Bearish money flow sell alert. And then it happened all over again right before earnings. The stock rallied up from 220 to 240. Wall Street is ever hopeful. Gave that money flow sell alert. How did it do that? Got overbought and there's no green here. It's like trying to sell yourself on a garden where you only have weeds and you're saying, oh, the garden's great. Well, the garden wasn't great. And the stock has ultimately dropped all the way down to 175. And you got another relative strength sell signal here at 192 on the way to 170. These patterns work over and over and over again. 
Power gauge is still bearish at the bottom, underperforming the market, institutions selling, and the bearish money flow sell alerts are just like money in the bank. So everything we've been looking at is what Warren Buffett calls the fat pitch. We call it the ideal setup. He has famously said they don't call balls and strikes on Wall Street, so you don't have to swing at every pitch. You can wait for your pitch, the ideal setup. So what's the missing ingredient? Our six pairs of buy and sell signals. You can go on our website, shakenanalytics.com, see the signals, explain the rationale. But here again, as with classic bulls, it's nice to know they exist, but how do you find them? We have a dashboard alert in our iPad and desktop app for every list in the system, for every ETF index. We tell you every morning which stocks triggered signals, changes in the power gauge. So this is from a webinar I did six months ago. And of the 40 stocks that I was following back then, five of them gave buy signals. Four of those worked out, Apple, Adobe, Marathon Petroleum and Anthem Health. Lenar in that weak home building group did not work. So Apple gave a relative strength buy at 171. Adobe gave a relative strength buy at 226. There's the Adobe buy at 226. There had been a series of relative strength buys. The stock ultimately peaked at 278. So if you follow the signal, you're using a disciplined approach based on proven analytics, and you improve your performance at the end of the year. Here's Apple, a webinar that we did just uh, in September, right before their new product announcement. The stock had dipped from about 230 to 218. We said the risk reward ratio in options play is strong, but wait for the new product announcement because Apple typically sells off after a new product announcement. That's exactly what happened. But we did say that this bullish vertical call spread was the best way to go. You could have bought the 217 call expiring in October for the $770. That's moved up to $1,100. That's a nice 50% move. Or you could have bought the vertical put spread, a uh, call spread rather, for $600. That's doubled. 50% versus a double on a move to 232 in the stock from 217. So 12 points, 6%, double your money. Not bad. And we have another way to let you know these things happen. On May 1st, we introduced our daily email alerts. Every morning at 8 o'clock on the stocks you follow and on one major average, the S&P 500 is a good one. We tell you what stocks have triggered signals that day. On a webinar I did before we came to Italy, Apple had triggered a relative strength buy at 220. Marathon Petroleum, a relative strength breakout. Let's see what happened. Apple went from 220 to 232. But guess what's happening here in Apple? Bearish money flow sell alert. New high on the stock, new all-time high. Money flow should be green, it's red, you're overbought. Time to take profits. Don't have to be a market timer, just follow the discipline. Bearish money flow sell alert. Now, Marathon Petroleum, relative strength breakout there, pulled back, went up again, went up again yesterday with a Crude oil moving up. Again, money flows negative. Smart money is coming out of the market here on a short-term basis. Don't think it'll matter in immediate term, but clearly people are nervous. Bonds are weak, yields are up, and equity traders are selling. So final note on the webinar, and then we're going to end with five stocks we love plus a special offer. Good defense leads to good offense. How do you play good defense? This is a friend of Bob Lang's, Herb Greenberg, who wrote for thestreet.com and CNBC. Avoid weak industry groups, know what stocks not to buy. Please don't bottom fish. 
Improve your performance by eliminating bearish rate of stocks like when from your portfolio. Spot the personality changes so you don't put your feet in cement and use bearish put spreads on weak stocks to make money on the downside. So we screen for them. In my weekly Market Insights newsletter, I screened on September 2nd for bearish rated stocks and weak industry groups. There's win. Bob noted we've been bearish on that for quite a while. Here's what it looks like. You've got the bearish personality change on this go around back in June. Stock was trading at around 190, 180. Institution selling, power gauge rating is bearish. You get the relative strength sell signal ahead of earnings, you take it. Rallies up here to 150. Money flow is negative, that's a money flow sell alert. You wanna get out, got your relative strength sell signal, and the stock drops to 130. Whirlpool, same industry group as Mohawk. Carpets, appliances, same thing impacted by the weak housing market. Read that chart from the bottom up, please. Power gauge bearish, underperforming the market for over a year, institution selling. You get that relative strength sell signal. You need to be out of the stock. So I'd like to end the webinar with five stocks that we think you should buy to participate in a booming economy between now and year end. Because as I said earlier, in the midterm election year, you want to buy in the fourth quarter and hold into the next year. And we like the tech stocks that led the market to new highs. Apple, Adobe, Amazon, Salesforce, Visa. We've looked at Apple. Now let's look at Amazon. Outperforming the market since November of 17. A little bit of institutional selling here. Great company. Power gauge is still bullish. But are you going to buy 100 shares of Amazon? That would cost you a staggering $200,000. Using a bullish vertical call spread, you can participate in a move on Amazon between now and December 21st from 1950 up to 2175, roughly a 10% move in the stock. And if you do, it costs you $8,000 versus $200,000 to buy the stock or $12,000 to buy the call option. It's much better to do the vertical put spreads. If Amazon moves to $2,200, $2,175, that spread widens out to 225 points. You've paid 80 points. That's a big profit. It's the only sensible way I know to play Amazon. Now, Salesforce is a stock that Jim Cramer and I absolutely love. Took me a long time to get convinced. But when I see what they're doing with acquisitions and big data and analytics for companies in the e-commerce area, I, th I realize what their strategy is. So. I think this is a stock that's going to lead the market. Jim and I both liked it. We talked about it on 822. Up in the left-hand corner is another feature of Chaken that I think is so important. Any good trading coach will tell you you should keep a diary. Well, that's easier said than done. What we've done is put a notes capability in Chaken. You can put in a note and save it for every stock that you're looking at. To recap what you were thinking when you bought the stock or when you didn't buy it or when you sold it. And I think that's a great discipline. So here's a stock that's given a number of relative strength buy signals. Look at the institutional accumulation in Salesforce since May. Outperforming the market, bullish power gauge, institutions are buying. So if you want to buy the stock, you want to wait for a pullback. 21-day average is a good spot. But the vertical call spread's your best bet. Instead of spending 15762 for 100 shares of stock, for $617, you can control 100 shares of Salesforce, not through November, not through December, 
through January 18th, over three months, this is the 160, 180 call spread. If it widens out, it goes to 20 points. You paid six, you make almost $1,400. You can do the math. It's got a nice bullish rating, 108. If you buy the call option, you're paying twice as much for less return. Always better to do the vertical call spreads if you've got the directional edge. Buy yourself the time to put the odds in your favor. So finally, Visa, I think it's a technology stock in the electronics payments area, doing a great job making new highs. You want to own stocks between now and year end that led the market up in the first nine months. Historically, that works. So Visa's on our list of five names that we really like. Now, everything we've been looking at, Chaikin Analytics, proven stock selection system with options play strategies built in. 20 factor model we've discussed in depth. We have a stock discovery engine that we didn't have time to get to that helps find new ideas. It's normally $2,195 for an annual subscription. You can go to chickenanalytics.com slash options. And Josh is putting up the link to the fulfillment page and the discount which we're offering of $300 on the webinar special, reducing the price to $18.95. Chakenanalytics.com slash options. The offer expires Sunday, October 7th. Now, Jim Kramer, my friend, Bob's really close friend, said on a webinar, a private webinar we did on January 30th, I learned a long time ago not to be on the other side of a check and trade. It's when we were talking about Centene at 105 that ultimately went to, I think, 140. And by the way, there's going to be an upcoming one-on-one -on -one with Jim and myself right after the election. So very exciting. Again, I owe a lot to Bob Lang for making this all possible. He really convinced Jim that this could be a wonderful partnership. So Bob, thank you so much for that. So you get the screener, options, ideas, our intraday charts, the earnings alerts, and my weekly market letter. But most importantly, as a Chaikin member, you get member-only access to our weekly strategy sessions run by market strategist Dan Russo. Unlimited coaching. Josh heads our customer support team along with David and Rob. One-on-one -on -one coaching if you need it, and Dan Russo's morning insights. Now, why are Dan's insights so important? Because Two days ago, his stock of the day was Horton Works, HDP. This is what he wrote, very bullish power gauge rating. Let's see what happened in two days to Horton's. Well, spiked up 22% on the opening today on a down day because they announced a merger with another cloud computing company. Dan has consistently identified long and short ideas like Horton Works on a daily basis since he joined us seven months ago. So here's the most compelling offer we've made in the last three months. Subscribe tonight to Chaikin Analytics. We'll take an additional $100 off the cost, reducing the price to $1,795 a year for an annual subscription as a fast action bonus for the first 10 people who subscribe tonight, you'll get a one-on-one -on -one phone call with Dan Russo. He'll walk you through how he picks these bullish and bearish stocks. And for everybody who subscribes on this webinar, we'll get a, a free copy of Bob Lang's options book, Everything You Need to Know About Options. As I said, I was honored to be asked to write the foreword. So we want to really get you into the Chaikin groove. It's powerful. It works. You can make money consistently in options. You combine what Bob Lang is doing with what we're doing, and you really have the best of fundamental technical and options flow research. So with that, Bob, I'd like to thank you for sponsoring the webinar and turn it back to you for some final words before Josh winds up the webinar. 
Thanks very much, Mark. It was a great presentation as always. Um, and I know it's really late back in Italy right now, but um, I know everybody is, um, is, is thankful that you spent the time tonight. Um, so I look, at, I look at this, everyone, and I see uh, at 1795, um, that comes out to be just slightly under 150 bucks a month on average. Um, I, I don't think that this is a, um, any, anything uh, difficult for anyone to make, make profits on. In fact, I, sus I suspect that maybe, Mark, within the one or two trades, I think um, by using the analytics carefully, um, people could make, recover this cost. So if that's an issue, people. Um, it's a, it's almost, it's a no brainer. Um, the benefits from Chaikin analytics. I mean, I can't, I, I could be on here for an hour explaining all those to you, but I think Mark, Mark's probably tired. He'd go to sleep if I had to list everything, but I can tell you a couple of things, um, for you. Some of the things that have been beneficial for me is the, are the webinars of the, of the, um, the recordings that have been made to teach you how to use the analytics, not just quickly, but properly being able to find the ideas and they find them for you. You know, everybody wants to be able to, to do things on their own. I get it. I understand it. I try to teach people to do things on their own. I'm an, I'm an advocate like Mark is. You teach a man to fish, you feed him for, for, for life instead of giving him a fish and feeding him for a day. We want to teach people. I want to teach them to do things on their own. But there's some people out there who just can't do it on their own for, for an, numerous reasons. Um, time constraints or whatever. This is the best vehicle I have ever seen to get you the information that you need quickly. I was an, I've, been, I've been trading options for almost 20 years now, and there is a five-letter word that I need to be successful, and that is S-P-E-E-D. I need speed. I need to get on ideas quickly, all right? Immediately. I can't sit there and think about what kind of trade I'm going to do. The chicken analytics tools is the answer to that problem. You don't, I don't have a problem anymore. I, I'm checking the analytics every single day, multiple times a day to find out what names I need to be on. I have other, other, other sources as well too, but this is the most important tool in my, in my toolbox. It's, one of, it's just one of many arrows in the quiver that helped me become successful as an options trainer. And you will do, you will do that too. I, I, I guarantee you. There's nothing better. And, and Mark, I'll, I'll just finish up with this. Other than the fact that they teach you everything that you need to know. All right. It's the updates. It's the constant updating of putting new stuff in here that absolutely is mesmerizing. It's, it's fascinating how you're constantly updating and making new things, making new tools available to everyone. And that, that just keeps you on the cutting edge. They used to say that uh, you go to a university and you see them constantly building uh, new buildings, that things are, they're movers and shakers. Well, Chicken Analytics is a mover and a shaker because they're constantly fixing things, making things better, refining things on the, uh, on the site. And I'll tell you what, from the first time I looked at it about four or five years ago, they've come a million miles from that time to where we are at right now. And it's, it's absolutely the penultimate tool to, to all, for all you guys to use. So um, I, I encourage everybody to get on there and I'm, I'm happy finally to, to, to give you guys a copy of my, my book, Know Your Options, which I published a couple of months ago. And again, gracious to Mark to, uh, for putting a, um, the forward in there. You'll be able to read what he wrote about, about us and about the, um, uh, about the book. And I'll, uh, you, you'll have that as my compliment. So, um, jump, jump on board here. I, I'm telling you, it's the best, uh, it's the best decision you'll, you'll make. And, uh, um, I think you'll have an opportunity to, uh, to make some good money using the chicken analytic tools. All right. Thanks very much. And Josh, I'm going to hand it back over to you. Bob, thank you so much for being with us tonight. And Mark, thank you as well. Thank you everybody for being with us tonight to take advantage of this incredible offer. You can use the link in the chat window. It is www.chickenanalytics.com slash options, or you can call us at 877-697-6783. Again, you can click the link in the chat window. It will automatically apply the discount. 
That is www.chakenanalytics.com slash options or call us at 877-697-6783. You can get that incredible half hour with my colleague and our chief market strategist, Bob uh, Dan Russo. You get Bob Lang's book. We can have you in our weekly uh, member sessions that we hold on options and on the market. We can have you in one tomorrow. Again, that is 877-697-6783 or click on the link www.chakenanalytics.com slash options. Josh, thank you very much. Uh, and we appreciate everybody taking the time to learn a little more about how to trade options successfully in a roaring economy. Have a good evening.